Welcome to the Possum 2017 Distribution Dev Room. We have Matthew Queen and Heiko Gumar here to talk to us about RTO's continuous packaging platform. Right, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, wait, microphone. Oh, okay. You're going to need, to, sorry, I forgot right. to tell them. It's my fault. You can, yeah, perfect. Uh, like this. Okay, so I'm Mathieu Yuan. Uh, there's not much time, so we'll go fast on some stuff. Hopefully, there will be there will be. Well, keep it like that. We'll have time for questions later. If not, I'm, I think I'm the only guy with a red cap around here, so you can find me easily. So uh, let's get with the basics uh, first, out of the way. Uh, if you don't know what RDO is, it stands for the RPM distribution of OpenStack. And if you don't know what OpenStack is, it's a collection of software that lets you uh, uh, install and uh, administrate uh, cloud infrastructures on uh, conventional ar hardware. RDO is also uh, a big community of users of OpenStack, of uh, package maintainers as well, administrators and so on. And uh, their goal in life is to help you uh, install your own OpenStack uh, uh, infrastructure. The maintainers of uh, packages maintain about uh, 250 uh, packages at the moment, and uh, it's uh, growing. Uh, so what do we need to build a package? Basically, it's going to be a very high level. First, you need the sources, obviously, of uh, the, the software that you want to package. We will call that uh, the upstream code in the, rest, in the remainder of the presentation. And the next uh, component of the package is called a spec file, or spec files if you have um, more. Uh, basically, it uh, contains the building steps of uh, the, uh, how to build the software from the sources, uh, how to install it, how to remove it, uh, the dependencies that it needs to, uh, to work on your system, the patches eventually, if uh, you need to adapt it to your system, and so on. So from that, we can infer that uh, the job of a packager is pretty much the same as the job of an open source developer. Uh, a packager will need uh, some form of version control. Uh, in the Fedora and CentOS uh, uh, universe, we call the spec file uh, repository the disgit repository. Uh, it has to be on a public platform because it has to be open to the community uh, and to reviews as well. Uh, you want also to make sure that the contributions that you get are of uh, the utmost quality, so you need automated testing and validation. So basically, you need continuous integration on it. And uh, your testing environment has to be controlled, and uh, so the tests are reprodu reproducible. Sorry, and uh, uh, you can and you have high confidence in the, their results. You also need a smart merging uh, 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 strategy. If you have a lot of contributions that come at the same time, you have to make sure that uh, when you merge them, you're not going to end up in a state of your master that you don't uh, that you that you don't really know. But when you're a packager, you also have. A, a specific uh, uh, constraint, which is upstream. You have to follow what's going on on, on upstream. Uh, you have to make sure that uh, your spec files evolve if upstream evolve, evolves. And you want to release as early as possible uh, after a change occurring upstream, uh, especially if the change uh, is a, a vulnerability fix or, um, or security fixes. And when you package OpenStack, it's even more complex due to the sheer size of the project. OpenStack represents uh, more than 600 projects for the last cycle. Uh, um, every six months, there's a release. The last cycle was called Newton. So in the last six months, uh, there were six, uh, more than 600 projects, uh, about 240 commits a day, which is humongous. Uh, just for Nova alone, which is a compute component, uh, we had more than uh, 1,700 commits, which is about 10 commits a day. And uh, during the stabilization phase, which is about one month before the release, uh, it's uh, ramped up to uh, about 280 commits a day. So what does this mean for OpenStack packagers in the RDO community? It means that you have to make sure that the spec file is validated after, uh, against each change, because if you wait for 1,700 commits, you're going to have, a, uh, to have a bad time. So you can do that at the, la at the last minute. Also, you need to be aware of the strong dependencies between uh, the softwares in uh, the OpenStack suite, because if Nova changes, it's going to impact all the other projects. So, Can you just explain what is Nova? <laughs> uh, it's uh, the compute component uh, for, uh, for OpenStack. So if you, if you have a change on Nova, it's going to affect everything. So you have to test again all your other packages to make sure it's still working. And the test platform must also be able to uh, absorb uh, huge spikes in, uh, in activity. So now that we know what the problems are, uh, let's look at the tools that we have uh, uh, at hand to build an RPM factory. So first, let's look at what the RDO community came up with. Uh, the main uh, tool I'm going to talk about, I'm going to 
be fast on this. If you have questions, just ask us after the presentation. The first one I want to talk about is called DeLorean, like uh, the car in uh, Back to the Future, because it basically builds packages from the future. It looks at what's happening upstream, and uh, when there's a change, uh, it's going to try to build uh, a package using the, the new changes in upstream. Uh, it's also, it also acts as a master IPM repository because it uses the latest uh, uh, source code from, up, from upstream. And if you want to know more, there's an article uh, linked on the presentation. We're also going to use uh, a CLI, a command line interface called RDOPKG, which will help with uh, basic tasks uh, needed for uh, maintainer, especially uh, flattening patch chains that, uh, that have to be uh, included in the spec file. We'll talk about that more when, we, uh, when uh, Heikel uh, talks about uh, the use cases. Next, uh, let's talk about community tools. Uh, the CentOS and Fedora community uh, use um, a, a tool called, uh, called Koji. Koji is basically a, a client and server uh, architecture that lets you build and uh, uh, store RPM packages. Uh, so you can use your own instance of Koji, but you can also use uh, the community build system, which is uh, um, an instance of Koji that has been set up by the CentOS community. And you can build if you, um, well, you have to set up uh, communication with the CentOS community first, but you can use it uh, to, uh, to build your packages uh, on it and test them. And the last uh, piece of software that we're going to use is called Software Factory. Uh, so um, this is uh, um, basically a, a, forge, a software forge, uh, which includes um, a CI CD platform. And the specificity of it is that it's inspired by what uh, OpenStack is doing for their own CI that we call Infra. So it uses uh, basically the same tools, uh, tools that you might know, like uh, Garrett for code review and Jenkins for, uh, uh, for testing, uh, for, for job automation, but also some um, some tools that uh, weren't, uh, that are not, not that uh, known because they are, they are developed by uh, the OpenStack uh, infrastructure, like uh, NodePool, which is a, a, a service that uh, provides uh, job nodes uh, on demand, and Zool, which is a kind of a release manager, uh, and also a job orchestrator. So I, I'll go fast on the features that Software Factory uh, provides. It's really cool for development, ju not just packaging. Uh, so you have code hosting and review through Garrett. You have um, uh, job orchestration through, through Ju uh, Zool and Jenkins, as I said. You have um, also Zool as a nice feature which is uh, uh, project dependencies management. When you build a test environment, it will build it, taking care of those uh, dependencies by itself. Uh, so NodePool uh, allows you to build, uh, uh, to use um, uh, uh, jobs, uh, nodes, and slaves on demand whenever you need them. Uh, you have a smart commit gating as well. Uh, so I'll go faster. Uh, the config is managed uh, as code, so you can also use a CI uh, workflow on it. Uh, and you have a flexible workflow, so that's why you are going to use it for, uh, for RDO. So with, so with all that, sorry, there's not much time, so we have to go fast. So with all that, we managed to create a RPM factory. So basically, um, upstream changes are going to be taken care of by DeLorean, uh, and uh, the tests are going to be uh, taken care of by Sorta Factory. The workflow is going to be managed by Sorta Factory, and all the, the building part is going to be taken care of by CBS, by the community build system. So this is a workflow overview. Uh, I believe that the presentation has to uh, include a very complex workflow diagram that we're not going to explain because uh, it, look, it means that we're doing some serious business. But basically what um, I want to, uh, you to uh, remember from that is that we're going to use three different kinds of repositories. We're going to work with upstream, with uh, the RDO disk git, which is the spec files uh, uh, repository and also a, uh, a repository for uh, patches that we're going to include in the, in, in the disk git. And I will let uh, Eichel talk to you about the use cases that we cover with this uh, architecture. Thanks, Matthew. Okay. Okay, just hold it like this. Uh, okay, I'm Eichel, I'm the world guy sitting here. I, I'm here because I'm the RDO release wrangler, so I'm the first user, so here to explain you the use cases. So we have three main use cases. The first one is packaging master branch, as <coughs> Matthew said. So we take sources from upstream, like uh, for instance the Nova sources, and then we take uh, the packaging sources, and then we use DeLorean take both repository and try to generate an archive of the sources and then generate the package using the spec file. It has also some magic to, do, to, do, uh, to generate proper versioning and stuff like that. And after that, we, we have two possibilities. The package builds. 
everything is fine. Well, mostly. Uh, because you, they, you could have hidden change that are not catch up, but that's our job from two packagers to fix that. It fails. So what will it do? So if it fails, usually it's because sources have changes changed, or we have missing dependencies or stuff like that. So we we need human intervention here. So we create a placeholder review in Garrett as a way to say, hey, maintainer, we need your intention to fix that point. You have the build logs showing you what's the problems. Please fix it. And the thing is, since we're using Garrett, it's public. So anyone can see the failure and fix it. And uh, the maintainer will be able to review your patch and fix it for it and uh, merge it. So it also helps to lower the, uh, the bar entry barrier to packaging. So next step. Well, also we're tracking stable branches. So rather than waiting that uh, upstream make a, makes a release, we just say, hey, let's track stable branches, do as we do with master branch, and package every commit, and see if anything changes. Usually, it just works for stable branches, at least in op for OpenStack. But the thing is, we run CI, and we can detect CI failures early and fix them. Usually, uh, it's mostly we have to change dependencies or we have a uh, dependency that, br uh, that uh, was updated and broke things. So what does it do? Uh, two things. Since we are sharing branches between stable branching, striking, and release uh, and actual releases, it detects if we change name and the version manually, so it will do a scratch build on CentOS build system. So we see if it builds, and if it, f it succeeds and uh, the maintainers approve the change, it will do the, the final build for you and it will get exported to CentOS repositories. Well, the thing is, we get to control who has access to both system like this, and we, it still it helps lowering the entry barrier because you don't have to grant build system access to everyone. So currently for CentOS Cloud Sig, we only have two or three people with access to the build system, but we have much more people doing the, uh, the uh, builds through Garrett. So this is the same thing. So if it, if it fails, uh, you still need uh, to have the maintainer come on and fix uh, the patch, but it doesn't get merged. The third case is when we have distro changes. For instance, uh, you have a user reporting a, a bug with, with uh, systemd services, so, which are something that are not always tested. So it's a distro-specific change. So you do the change, and it, as a previous use case, it will get built in CentOS build system and divest. You also have another category of patch, which are changes, distro-specific changes which are downstream patches. Well, in RDO cases, use case, we try to limit the number of downstream only patch. So what we do is we have a repository tracking upstream sources, and we manage downstream patches as open review in Garrett. So if you know Garrett, usually when you add patch, it gets merged. But in this specific case, it doesn't get merged. This allows us to track the downstream patches history across uh, the releases because we keep updating uh, the, um, the, the uh, tracking uh, upstream tracking repository and uh, our patches are just a, se a set of reviews and Garrett will detect if it they need to be rebased or if we have rebase uh, issues so when when you can just rebase, it can do it for you automatically if you configure Gary to do automatic rebase. If, it, if you don't and you, or you have failure, uh, you, just have to, you just have to retrieve the repository, retrieve the review code, so the RDO package tool, tool will simplify that for you. And then you just do your manual rebase and update the existing reviews. So it simplifies maintaining downstream reviews. As a packager for Two, two distribution, CentOS and Fedora. I had experience with uh, managing downstream patches, and the biggest issue is simplifying collaborative work 
um, across patches. So different packagers have used different tools and they work sometimes on the same page. Here we have only one, carry it and get, period. So it makes it simpler. Okay, so return on experience. So w for RDO, we're in the Oketa cycle, Oketa being uh, the next open stack release, which will happen if around February 20. So we have numbers for the previous cycle, which is Newton. We had about 800 comets from 70 contributors. So my team at Red Hat is about seventh person, and not all of them are doing packaging. So that shows that we have multiple people outside the RDO team helping on the packaging. So m mostly people outside Red Hat and few Red Hatters. We also quote uh, through DeLorean uh, in Master Branch about 230 build, build failure. So it's about one and a half build failure per day, but it's not. We don't have build failure every day. It's mostly about uh, in early in the cycle or during um, just before uh, release candidates. So we can get for two weeks no build failure, and uh, just before the release candidate, we can get 30 build failure at once. But it allows us to detect the uh, build issue early. We, when we get, uh, for instance, and I'm coming here, RDU Newton packages were available in CentOS repository 10 hours after the upstream general announcement. And why? Because when uh, we, the, the announcement was made, uh, all, all our packaging was ready. <coughs> we had CI jobs that was already running against that code because it got frozen at some point. All what, that what we had to do was just pushing uh, the final, uh, the final uh, tags in pa packaging repo, running CI jobs, generating reposi final repositories, and also uh, updating documentation or own announcement, and that's all. So that's quite fast, because the usual process for distribution is wait for the announcement, retrieve the table, try to build the, the, the thing, if it fails, fix it. So just imagine for OpenStack, which is about 400 packages, and I'm not even counting the dependencies. So if you're trying to do that, it takes like two weeks at, at, at least to, do, to roll a release. And two weeks is very, lo very narrow to do that. So it, it's, it's kind of successful to release faster and with higher quality thanks to CI jobs running behind. So, uh, the return on experience was, it taught, uh, we have automated the distribution pipeline, so it's like continuous delivery in practice. So we're following the OpenStack pipeline, integrating within the CentOS pipeline, release pipeline. We have still few feel few things to automate, but it's mostly here. Oh, sorry. Um, we uh, we uh, leverage a collaborative work through Garrett uh, and reviewing. So it has made much advantage on over GitHub pull requests. But but I think the same article that Mathieu was pointing out early. I think another yeah. One, but another one. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. It okay. Uh, one of the issue when we s you start a new RPM di or any packaging distribution uh, is that building a community of contributors. Okay, let's let's be honest. Most open site developers don't care about packaging. They don't want to learn about packaging. They don't want about to learn about new process. So we are using a process that is much similar to the open stack one. Using we they using Garrett. We using Garrett. Uh, we have the same concepts, and also uh, anyone that is not familiar with packaging can start rolling up because they can see through reviews how people are working, what they are changing in spec files and stuff. So it's kind of a self-documenting process. So it makes it simpler, and you get code transparency, peer reviewing, and so and so on, faster onboarding. 
So if you want to join us, so if you want to implement that kind of process, you can look at softwarefactoryproject.io, which is uh, the basis of uh, the RPM factory project. Um, it is used by Software Factory itself, distributed CI, which is a distributed CI for uh, RPM distributions, Skydive, which is a network uh, uh, analysis so engine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, and also, uh, RV, uh, if you want to see a live <laughs> instance, you also have review.rdoproject.org, but also three projects. Uh, RDO uh, from the cloud, uh, CentOS Cloud Seek, DeLorean uh, project, and also Optools, which is another CentOS Seek, providing operation in, in, uh, operational tooling. And maybe your project, or maybe you want, want to build your instance. So if you want to keep in touch, well, softwarefactoryproject.io, uh, also RDO project, on Freenode, you have, uh, you have the Software Factory channel if you want to uh, roll your incidents. If you want to have feedback or help uh, or want to know about OpenSAC, we have uh, the audio channel. And also uh, the mailing list of both projects. So feel free to ping us. Uh, uh, Mathieu is uh, Emurin um, on the uh, RSC. I'm, uh, I'm number 80 on Freenode. So Feel free to ping us or catch us in the lobby. So thank you for attending. Thank you. Uh, before we take any questions, since we made it uh, pretty fast actually, so that's good. Uh, I just want to add something that I didn't have time to uh, mention before about uh, the way uh, the workflow is implemented. We can look at the, at the uh, uh, workflow uh, diagram. What, an important thing that is uh, added uh, through Software Factory is that all the tests for CI are done before any actual merging. Okay. Uh, so that's a very different approach to uh, what usually uh, CI does, which uh, because the CI tests are usually uh, launched once some code is added to the code base. And because we, have, uh, we are an open source project and we might have a lot of contributions, uh, we want to make sure that the contributions are uh, valid before we actually merge them. So not just a peer review, but also automated validation. So do you have any questions? Is this workflow available on your website? It's on the, yeah, on the RDO documentation. Yes? The downstream patches to the repos to be considered using Git upstream. Uh, it's complicated. What? Uh, about using the patches on <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Have you considered using it? Get off straight. It's a tool for managing. Oh, uh, nope. Uh, we just. In the current process, the changes are kept open. Yeah. So they're not review those. No, we have rolled our own tooling to flatten the patch in uh, the packaging uh, disk git. Because uh, this Git uh, just store all of the downstream patches in the, the repo, so we we don't need to have them inside a repository. We just need a tool to retrieve the flattened patches. So our dear package will connect to Garrett. It will see all the open reviews, and uh, it will check if CI is passing. It will check also the voting, so you can have patches open, review open. But if they don't get the right votes, they are not included. So you can even remove a patch very fastly and, okay, I will just change my vote here to remove it and it gets removed automatically for you. Okay, another question? That's the last question. Okay. <laughs> yeah? Are you running your CI tests on every change in Flanders, Nova, or do you... Oh, uh, we're trying. Actually, uh, the thing is we don't have enough capacity to run that, but it's we're retrieving changes from upstream every five minutes. So that's pretty much close. But sometimes we get three comets merged at the same time. And we just test them all together. But that's something we're working on. But uh, I don't think we ever had more than three comets tested at once in practice. And by the way, I'm seeing uh, RPM Factory contributors here, Sebastian. So if you can applaud him. I'm happy to see you. Okay. So.
Thank you.